I'm not real good at public speaking either. Dad, your shoe's on top one. That's all right. It's a long way down there. Um, I was actually going to say something before we danced, and I'll just say it now because I don't want to take up time, but a couple of things. One, for the Hunt family, you know, your kid gets married to a man, and in most situations, you say to that man, you better take care of my little girl. That's not the case with this guy and this family. We feel so blessed that someone so special would be willing to take Katie. <laughs> I know, but, but uh, truthfully, he is such a special guy, and, it, and it, 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 is, it is special to have him in the family. Um, the other thing, this place that we've gathered, you need to know how special where we're sitting is to me and my kids and my mother-in-law and our family. You know, Katie, Sean, and Megan were the faces of Peak and Peak advertising from the time they were four years old until they were 12. And in fact, when Katie was 12, she was the face of the season ski pass. And she came up here with her friends and they all decided to not buy lift tickets. So when security caught them, I got a phone call from the general manager saying, this is awkward. She said, we have your daughter in security having stolen lift line passes and she's the face on such passes. <laughs> So today she skied again, and once again she feels vindicated because she didn't buy a lift pass today. But Peak and Peak, you need to know what they really did for us. Aside from all the great opportunities we've had to vacation here, for the last couple of weeks of their mother's life, her family is so big and they all wanted to be around her. Well. The folks here at Peak and Peak gifted my kids and their mother and my mother-in-law one of their million dollar homes up at the top of the slopes so the whole family could be together up until just a couple of days before she passed. So having Katie get married here, we know mom's looking down and just look at the weather we had. I guarantee you mom had a special part in all of this. She ain't crying, she's drinking a beer, we know. And lastly, when we dance, we're going to dance to a song, and I thought you should know why we've chosen the song we did. When I was a senior in high school, my mother gifted me tickets to a concert of a guy named Harry Chapin. Harry Chapin was this, this folk rock singer that I loved. And crazily, Rolling Stone magazine and all the music, music critics said he was terrible and he wasn't a good singer. So when my mom gifted me the tickets, I didn't ask anybody to go with me. I got on the bus down at the bottom of our road. We went down to Stanley Theater and the tickets she got me were about two rows from the ceiling. And as I'm standing in line, Harry Chapin, the singer, pulls up in a taxi cab. One of his major songs in his life was the song Taxi. And now he was touring the sequel to that song in 1981, the year I graduated. And he got out and he saw me standing in line and he said, where's your tickets? I said, they're right here, sir. He gifted me a front row seat. So I sat there for the whole concert and in that concert, I remember him saying, because it was just big news that he wasn't any good. He said, it doesn't matter that the critics don't think I'm any good, it matters that my music matters to somebody, that my music matters to you. I never forgot that. And later that year, just a couple of weeks after this concert, Harry Chapin was killed on the highway in New York on his way to do a beneficiary concert. He did more for world hunger than any act ever in the country. He's what started these concerts of support and donating. More concerts he gave were free than were paid to to him. And the date that he died, 
I was in my brother's Cutlass S listening to 96 Kicks when the DJ came on and said Harry Chapin died in a fiery crash on July 16, 1981. So every year after that, I would listen to Harry Chapin's song on the day of his anniversary of his passing. Now advance 11 years. My wife's water broke on, on July 16, 1992. We were on our way to the hospital when a disc jockey in Erie, Pennsylvania, I believe it was Dan Geary, came on and said, this is the anniversary of Harry Chapin's death. He died almost to the minute, so we play this song, one of his songs, Cats in the Cradle. Cats in the Cradle is a song about Harry Chapin's kid and him growing up and her, him growing up despite him having to live his crazy life. And as Katie was born, from that night on until she grew too old to want me around, every night I would put her to bed and I would tell her the words to the song. You would change them. To the I would change them. <laughs> Instead of it being... Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon. It was Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon. Pretty girls wear pink. There's a man on the moon. When you coming home, Katie? I don't know when. When you coming home, Dad? So I changed the words up to fit our lives. And that's how she went to bed every night. So tonight when we dance, that song will play, and I'll whisper in her ear. And the last verse of the song goes a little bit like this. I've long since retired. Katie's moved away. She found a great man in Buffalo, I just had to say. Katie, I'm proud of you. Can you stay for a while? I'd really love to, Dad, if I could find the time. But John's got a new job, and Bella's got the flu. But it's been sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, Thank God Katie didn't grow up like me, and she grew up like her mother. So we will dance the Cats in the Cradle, and I hope you all watch it, and I apologize for taking so much time. But Harry Chapin, Cats Just the other day, came into the world, and the universe was made. Harry Chapin, Cats in the Cradle, and the
Michael and Katie up there.